Hi, my name is Pitt Turner, Executive Director of the Uptime Institute, and I'm here with Andrew Stokes, an IT executive who has just finished an implementation of a project in Deutsche Bank to bring 100% outside air cooling to a Manhattan data center. There are lots of places to talk about the, the kinds of technologies and how you use the control algorithms. Not, we're not going to go there because I think the industry has enough technical knowledge to solve most of our problems. What we lack is an understanding of how to get approval and how to move forward. So I'd like to ask Andrew, what were some of the barriers in your project to go from a legacy kind of solution to 100% outside air cooling for a major bank? It was a very significant process for us to have to go through internally to be able to get that approval. Um, given that we're running mission critical trading ap applications, low latency, cloud type applications in that space, web and intranet sites, financial systems, etc., that level of criticality for the equipment comes with a, a level of responsibility that we had to go through on the due diligence before we can get these, these projects approved. So generally, Banks take a reasonably risk-averse stance when they're doing. I would say generally is really a profound understatement. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and it's 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 very typical for people to say, um, "Show me ten other banks that have done this thing first, right. so that we can now be the eleventh. And gee, aren't we being innov innovators by being the eleventh in this field? Mm -hmm. The challenge is to be the first in this field, and that's that comes with a responsibility to make sure that you're clearly aware of where the risks are." You've researched those risks. You have compensated controls and mitigations of those risks, and then you make sure that you're, you're working as a team to, to bring each of the the risks and the concerns of the, the colleagues in that space to the table, so we can discuss these things and formally approach them. You, you mentioned the other day, uh, in response to a comment I'd made about a multiple denial kind of pro approach to project approval. You know you're going to go in. You know you're going to get kicked out. You bring it back. And per, through that cycle, you get to the point where you heard, how many times did you go back? I would say probably at least four times. Mm -hmm. And it took probably the best part of a year to get this project approved. Just for the approval Just cycle. for the approval mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah, mm -hmm. going through, um, first of all, the, the, the disbelief stage, first of all. Are you serious? You're going to run an outside air? <laughs> New York City, this can't be done. Yeah, we're running a trading floor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do that exactly. And, then, and then the same for... Are you serious? This is for mission critical. I get it for dev and test, but for mission critical usage in this space, mm -hmm. you can't possibly do this. And then it was an interesting challenge when even groups like the Green Grid data, so the, the um, calculators of free air capability, mm -hmm. were used to actually justify why this project shouldn't proceed. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. The calculators on why you should use outside air cooling were used to deny your project Correct. at one cycle. Correct. Right. That, that was certainly one of the loops. So, basically, if you look at the, the early versions of the calculators on the green grid, and they've since been, been fixed, the calculators basically said if you want to run the ASHRAE standards or the ASHRAE recommended range, look at the number of hours of the year that the climate is exactly inside that window. And that's the number. Ah. So, for example, in your 8,760 hours of the year, maybe you get 3,000 hours of that in New York City. Right. Now, the, the first thing you've got to understand with that is all those hours when you're below temperature, the original calculators were saying that's not good for right. outside air. Well, really, all you have to do is do some mixing of return air, bring the temperature exactly up, right. and you're good. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Or if the air is too dry, add a bit of water to the mm -hmm. air and then you, you, you bring that back up into range. Mm -hmm. So granted we had to work through with our executives why would it be the case that our internal engineering capabilities, and certainly by no means just not, not just me, it's a whole team that's worked on this thing, how is it that we have more understanding of this space than a group such as the Green Grid? So then we had to go through understanding the, the background behind where that Green Grid data came from and then talking to those guys and seeing how, how the the optimization process could continue so that we could justify and show how we've been talking to the Green Grid about these things, how that thing was going forwards. Yeah, so you mentioned something a moment ago. Now, you're an IT executive. Yes, sir. Right? You're not a facilities person in, no. in camouflage. As an IT executive, you just talked about uh, adding a bit of moisture and cooling it off or changing the relative humidity. I became very convinced during your presentation earlier that you really do understand the dynamics of the psychometric chart 
And then that was an important learning for you to be comfortable with that evaporative magic and mixing and return air and all that kind of stuff. As an executive, to be comfortable with it, you became knowledgeable about that site. Absolutely. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I've always felt that through my career, um, I've been a generalist. I've, I've certainly done specialty roles as well, but in being a generalist and having a, a real thirst for knowledge inside this industry, it takes me in all kinds of directions, from chip design to leakage currents to energy optimization to ecological matters, um, operating system design and system programming, all the way into virtualization and cloud computing. Mm -hmm. And through my career, I've done technical roles, I've done line management roles. My current role is chief architect for Deutsche Bank's infrastructure team. And in that role, that's, that's the broadest remit that I've had uh, in my career looking through this stuff. What's convinced me over the past five years or so is that the integration of facilities knowledge and IT knowledge is absolutely critical for mm -hmm. our industry. Mm -hmm. So I've taken the time, certainly um, burned the patience of some of my facilities <laughs> colleagues asking the dumb questions to get to an understanding that I understand it personally, I can then present that information and I can talk about it from an IT perspective looking reasonably confident as a mechanical executive as well. So, yes. so that, that's, that's hopefully what... what so you really developed a level of comprehension so that you could represent all that magic air dynamic stuff. I understand this as you present to your executive team yes. and it raised the whole credibility of the project, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. And by the same token, um, our mechanical and electrical engineers needed to develop an understanding of the technology that we were deploying in our data centers, the thermal ranges, why some of the control systems were important so that they had an appreciation of, for example, um, delta T per hour of the servers, why that would be Im important for us from a, a technology side and, and the warranty limits side for the equipment. So graduates, you raise the level of understanding across an entire design team so that mechanical guys at least have a basic understanding of VMware ESX, for example, mm -hmm. you start to get to a level of, of shared trust about how do we optimize the entire system. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems as well that there are some other tools that you, you talked about using in, in overcoming that multiple denial process, uh, the traffic traffic signal. Yes, Can exactly. you talk a little bit about how you use traffic signals in this, exactly. in this cooling of IT technology project? So when you're trying to overcome a set of people that, that have concerns, legitimate concerns, really not overcome, but overcome the problems, not overcoming the people. Mm. The, the challenge you have is you need people to quantify what their problem is, and give, give some examples of why they think that's a problem, and then you need to be able to absorb that information, document it, play that back and say, is this exactly, if I captured the, the uh, issue that you're concerned about and the impact, um, in, in a, a very tangible sense. So to be able to do that gives a baseline then of things to go work on. So we, we developed a very simple traffic light system internally inside the bank, which was red, amber, green. Red was a red issue is an issue that the executive that you're dealing with, the stakeholder you're dealing with, feels that this thing is a showstopper. Unless this problem is resolved, um, they won't give their consent to the project to go ahead okay. and we accept that by putting that red status on we said we accept that issue if that issue still stands we won't proceed with this project okay so we dealt with between 20 to 30 red issues at, at okay. a certain point of the project and this is part of the the multiple denial stage because these issues come out over time people think okay Here's another concern, and now I've thought about it a bit further. Here's a further concern on. I will put on number 31 and number 32, for Correct. example, Correct. Late, late in the game. So then, so then the, the concept is, you'd like to get to green across the board, mm -hmm. where green would be issues completely resolved. There's a body of evidence that says that whatever the concern was, it's been satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's proceed. That's mm -hmm. fine. We'd like to get to greens across the board, in a practical sense it's difficult to get to greens everywhere. So we had this intermediary step, which was the amber step, which says, proceed with caution. And what we meant by that was, there may still be some residual concerns, and certainly we're cautious about proceeding because we want to see the evidence building up to say that this is a, a safe thing to do, but we're not going to stop the project based on, on amber. So okay. if you can turn 20 reds into 20 ambers, that's a go project. Right. If you can turn 20 ambers into, say, 
15 greens and 5 ambers, you've got a lot of confidence now that you've got a, a project that can... And can the idea of an amber is that we, we will resolve it as we go forward or we'll develop enough information to be able to accept it, which correct. is another form of resolution. Yes, yeah, correct. correct. And so going through that process and going through probably four or five sessions with the senior team to, to look through the, the risks and understand how those risks were addressed and mitigated, developing evidence for each one of those things, we gradually accepted or got the acceptance of, of the, the wider approvals team that each of these issues uh, went back from, from reds to, towards ambers. Okay, great. Thank you very much.